Now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Roma Wines present Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Miss June Dupre as star of Your Devoted Wife, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you June Dupre in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! careful when you lift him, won't you? Yes, ma'am. Are you there on the end? Keep his body higher. Oh, please watch. I'm doing my best. Oh, do look. That step's terribly high. Where is that porter? What compartment, lady? What? Oh, oh, dear. One minute. Hey, now, look. He's not too light, lady. Yes, I know. Here. Hmm. Here it is. Compartment E. No, I guess that's down at the other end of the car. Now, wait for me. Where is that porter? Oh, there you are. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm Mrs. Thornton. This this is my husband. He's very ill. Uh, yes, ma'am. You're in compartment E. The bed's made up. Oh, thank you. Please keep him covered well. Uh, this way, please. And do be careful when you lift him from the stretcher. I'll attend to that, ma'am. Lift him from under his arms. Easy now. Easy. Watch the door. Uh, right in here, please. Lay him right down there. That's fine. Are you certain there are plenty of blankets? Uh, yes, ma'am. You can have more if you like. Well, I guess that's all. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, yes, will you tell Dr. Stevens everything went well? Yes, ma'am. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm the porter for this car, ma'am. I'll be with the car to Chicago. Just ring if you want anything. I'll remember. That'll be all for now. Yes, ma'am. I do wish we'd start. It's so stuffy in here. What was that? Oh, Martin, you startled me. Where are we? How are you, darling? Did you rest well? I'm all right. You're rather groggy. What What kind of room is this? We're in a compartment, dear. On a train? Yes, dear. Now, don't try to sit up. But why? Well, please, please put the covers over you. Another one of your tricks, Melissa? Now, you know perfectly well what the doctor said. But you you never said anything. You never told me. Well, I knew you'd be angry, darling. Angry? Uh, What's the use? Then you're not, really. Oh, darling, I'm so glad. Are you? Yes, darling. Why do you ask? No, ma'am. Are you warm enough? Yes. Could I get you something? No, thank you. I detest train rides. I would have made plane reservations only... Only it would have been difficult to prop a drug man up in a seat. Oh, Martin. It's the truth, isn't it? I don't know what you mean. But you do know I was carried on this train. You do know you gave me sleeping pills to put You're ill, darling. Very ill. You've done a wonderful job. A very skillful planner. You ought to be congratulated. The doctor told me to give you those sleeping pills when you didn't rest well. Come now, Melissa. Have I complained lately? Well, no. But I can tell you're restless in your sleep. Oh? How did you determine that? I've tiptoed into your room lately when you've been sleeping. Well, I have a watchdog as well as a wife. You needn't be rude. Please, Melissa. We know each other too well. Darling, you mustn't get upset. No, we mustn't get upset. Let's make this a pleasant trip, shall we? As you wish. Well? Where are you taking me? 
Before I say anything, anything at all, I want you to know that what I'm doing is all for you. Do you understand? Perfectly. You don't sound as if you do. I'm ill, Melissa. Remember? You can be most exasperating at times, Martin. Quit stalling. Let's have it. Well, the doctor told me there's a chance, and a good one, that the clinic he recommended could determine exactly what's the matter with you. Oh? Perhaps even cure you. I think not. Oh, darling, why don't you try? You do want to live, don't you? I don't know why. What did you say, dear? I said I'll try. There, you see? If you'll just make a little effort, then... How long am I going to be cooped up in this thing? We'll be in Chicago tomorrow and take you right to the clinic. Your scheme won't work, Melissa. What on earth do you mean? What scheme, dear? Yes. Tickets, please. Yes, one moment. Promise me you'll behave. Go ahead. Get him the tickets. Uh, your tickets, please? I'll come outside with you. Oh. Here they are. Oh, thank you. Now, uh, you won't change trains, madam. This will be your car on through. Oh, thank you. Oh, I understand your husband's very ill. Yes. Very. Hmm. If there's anything I can do? No. No, there's nothing one can do. But... Yes? If my husband should happen to see you... Oh, it's so embarrassing for me to have to say this. I understand, madam. My husband... It's... It's not a physical condition. If during the journey anything out of the ordinary should happen... Yes? Of course, I'm not saying that it will. Oh, I understand. But if it does, just disregard it. You might explain to the porter also. Certainly. You see, my dear husband is insane. You needn't tiptoe, Melissa. I'm not asleep. I knew you weren't, darling. Comfortable? Quite. What took you so long? I was just, uh, just asking the conductor about the connections. You're very efficient. But then you always were. It's much simpler that way. I must put these tickets where I won't lose them. Darling. Yes? My keys. What keys? Please, dear, the keys to my luggage. They were in my purse when I left. What would I want with them? I can't imagine, dear. Please return them. Look, I'm in pajamas. They're not around my neck. If you wish to embarrass me in front of the porter, then I have no alternative but to ring for it. No, no, no. Wait. You in. They're on the shelf by the light. Now, what on earth would you want with my keys, dearest? If there's anything I can get you, or if you like, we'll go through the luggage together. Don't be so condescending. Oh, but you were looking for something. I want to help you find it. I wasn't looking for anything. We'll start with your luggage first. Here, we find a robe, some socks, a brush, handkerchiefs, a towel, toilet articles. You needn't go on. Oh, but I must, darling. I want to convince you. About what? That I don't know, but we'll look further. Shorts, bedroom slippers, those your mother gave you, a few ties. You're a good actress, Melissa, a very good actress. Really, Martin, you are a mystery. You don't happen to see a suit, top coat, and a pair of shoes, do you? Oh, darling, why didn't you tell me? Am I that thoughtless? I didn't know. But of course you would wonder. Yes, one would. It's all very simple to explain. You're ill. You have no need for those things, so I packed them in the trunk. It's in the baggage car. I hope. Silly boy, of course it is. I checked it myself. I see. Dinner's not being served. One car's the rear. What time is it? Ten of seven. It's going to be an awfully long trip. I know, dear. Do try and make the best of it. What are you doing? Just ringing for the porter. Why? My every move excites you, doesn't it? I'm just going to order dinner. But you needn't. I'm not hungry. One moment. 
Did you ring, ma'am? Yes. I'd like dinner served Breathing, here. Melissa. I, I'll be quite all right. But I thought it would you be... You go and have dinner. I, I don't care for anything. S some tea, perhaps. Are you certain you'll be all right? Quite certain. Just some tea, then, for Mr. Thornton. Yes, ma'am. I'll go now, dear, but I'll be back shortly. Keep those covers up. I will. Porter. Porter. Yes, ma'am? I presume the conductor has explained to you about my husband. Yes, ma'am. He sure did. Then would you watch our compartment very carefully? I don't think I should have left him there alone. Sure will, ma'am. And don't forget his tea. Coming right up. Oh, which way is the diner? One car back. Now remember. I sure won't forget. Table for one, please. I'm alone. Mr. Thornton, your husband, come quick. What's happened? He's gone, ma'am. He just ain't there. I went to get the tea and... Oh, he couldn't. He couldn't be. Did you look thoroughly? Uh, look, ma'am, he sure enough ain't here. Oh, are all these compartments filled? Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, don't stand there. Do something. I'll go back through again. No, no, you stay here. I'll go to the front of the car. Uh, yes, ma'am. He couldn't have gone far. He, he wouldn't dare try anything. He's alive. He's got to be. He couldn't die now. Not now. Martin! Martin! Don't jump! Keep away from me! Please, you've got to come! Keep away from me! I Order! Let go of me, you stone oh, woman! Somebody, somebody, please help me! Let go of me! Mr. Gordon! Let go. I, I'm all right. Let's get out of here. Oh, Martin, darling. What were you thinking of? I can't breathe. Help me, Potter. Yes, ma'am. Easy now, ma'am. Martin, I faint. Such a shock. What a foolish, foolish thing to try. I'm sorry, Melissa. Guess it was. Thank you, Porter. That'll be all. Yes, sir. There now. Please lie down. I'm all right. Here, drink this. More sleeping pills? Yes. You're such a faithful wife, Melissa. I couldn't be otherwise. And you want me to live so badly. I do, Martin. So very badly. I wonder why. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star June Dupre in Your Devoted Wife by David R. Gillespie. Roma Wine's presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Last week, a friend of mine, a Roma Wine user and suspense fan, made an interesting comment about my announcements. Brad, he said... The past few weeks, you've talked mostly about Roma California Sherry. Now, I agree Roma Sherry is a wonderful wine. I enjoy it. But I also enjoy, and think you should mention, some of the other fine Roma California wines. Your flame bright Roma Tokay, or my wife's favorite, that rich golden Roma Muscatel, and Roma makes a delicious port. I always keep it on hand to welcome guests. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend Tom is right. So, may I remind you that fine Roma dessert wines include port, muscatel, and toquet, in addition to America's first call to dinner, Roma sherry. And for those who enjoy vermouth, with or without soda, in fact, anyway, Roma features two great vermouths, both dry and sweet. Vermouths, zestful and full-flavored, with almost a hundred rare herbs. Remember, you like your favorite wine better by Roma. For Roma, America's greatest vintner, with unmatched winemaking resources, gives you unvarying taste goodness at reasonable cost. That's why more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage June Dupre as Melissa Thornton with William John Stone as her husband, Martin Thornton, in Your Devoted Wife, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense.
Conductor. Hmm? Well, it's rather late for you to be up, isn't it? Yes, I... Uh, I couldn't sleep. Can I help you? Yes, you can. When is our next stop? Uh, let me see. We're doing Minnewonka at 2.32. We're running a few minutes late. Just about 20 minutes. There's a telegraph station. I, I mean, we can send a wire? Yes, of course. It's very important that this message gets to Chicago immediately. I wonder if it would be possible for you to... Could you get off at the next stop and... and... Uh, now, look, Mr. Thornton. Can't your wife send it? No, no, she's asleep. I, I don't want to bother her. Oh, I see. Well, all right, give it to me. I'll have the porter drop it off. Yes. You see, I, I have it written. Here it is. I'll send it as soon as we stop. Thank you very much. Not at all. Good night. Good night. Sleep well, dear? You saw to that. We'll be in in 15 minutes. I wish it were all over with. How do you mean, darling? Oh, clinic. Doctors pawing me. You know, darling, you and your antics rather upset me last night. I couldn't finish my dinner. I'm sorry, Melissa. I, I'll try and be more successful next time. There won't be a next time. I wouldn't bank on it. You promised me there wouldn't. Did I? Let's not bicker. I do so want you to get better. To be strong and happy again. You're going to some lengths to accomplish that, aren't you? No more than a devoted wife should. How old am I, Melissa? Why, you'll be 30, the 20th of June. This is June. How silly, of course it is. How many more days, Melissa? Really, Martin, I can count. It's, it's 13, 14, I should imagine. Imagine, huh? How many times have you counted these days? How many? Oh, it's ridiculous. Why shouldn't I remember your birthday? Every loving wife... Yes, has... but this birthday, this one coming up, it's pretty important to you, isn't it? What are you talking about? $50,000. Oh, darling, you do come into your inheritance this year, don't you? If I'm lucky. You're talking in riddles. It's your money. Mine? When I reach 30? Well? But if I don't reach 30, then Sis gets it. You won't see a penny of it. What are you trying to say exactly? Don't you know? I most certainly do not. I won't live to be 30, Melissa. You're trying to frighten me. Not at all. Yes, you are. You hate me, don't you? Not hate just nothing. A blank. Let's not quarrel, darling. It upsets you so. We won't quarrel. It's too late for that. I tried to be a good and faithful wife. In your way, I guess you have. It's the way I thought best. As for your inheritance, I, I shall forget all about it. And you should. You see, Melissa, I wired my lawyer to meet us in Chicago. You're joking. Not at all. You see, I didn't take your sleeping pills last night. Martin! In just mean... about ten minutes, I'll have a different arrangement in my will. What a cheap trick to pull. You wouldn't dare change your will. Wouldn't I? What did you do? Sent a telegram last night when you were asleep. Yes. Porter, ma'am. Yes? Your luggage. Oh. Could I ask you to step outside a moment, ma'am? Luggage? Oh, yes. The conductor here would like to speak to you, ma'am. Of course. Oh, uh, Mrs. Thornton, your husband asked me to send this wire last night. Wire? Yes? Well, knowing about what you told me, his, uh, his mind, I mean. Yes? I, I didn't send it. You didn't? May I have it? Oh, certainly. Meet Sunset Limited in Chicago Thursday noon, June 7th. Don't fail. Bring copy of my will. Compartment E, car 79. Signed, Martin. That's it. You've done me a great favor. Well, I hope I did right. You most certainly did. Thank you. No, not at all. 
What's wrong? Nothing, darling. Nothing at all. What took you so long? The porter was showing me where our luggage would be on leaving the train. Oh. Darling, look at you. Now you must keep covered up. And we aren't going to quarrel anymore. Everything's going to be just fine. Just fine. Chicago! We're coming in now, ma'am. Please call me for any assistance with Mr. Martin. Thank you, Porter. We wouldn't want anything to happen to Mr. Martin now, would we? You may see your husband now, Mrs. Thornton. Thank you. Happy birthday, darling. <laughs> Even flowers. Aren't they lovely? Very. Well, when will you know? You mean, when will we know? That's right. I, too, get a verdict. It was very foolish of you to have me go through the clinic, too. It did no harm. But such a waste of time. Come in. Here's doctor now. Thank you. Darling, no matter what the verdict, you, you must be brave. I'll do my best. Well. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Please uh, sit down, Mrs. Thornton. Thank you. Uh, well, I uh, don't know quite how to start. Let's have it, doctor. Well, Mr. Thornton, I'll be brief. All of the tests and every diagnosis made indicate that there's uh, absolutely nothing organically wrong with you. Nothing wrong? That's what he said, Melissa. Aren't you happy? Yes. Yes, of course. Well, that's that. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, Mrs. Thornton. Yes? Wouldn't you like to hear your diagnosis? Oh, I'd completely forgotten, of course. Sit down, Mrs. Thornton. Thank you. Mrs. Thornton, if you're careful, and by that I mean careful, you will have at the most 30 days more to live. <laughs> home, Melissa? Yes. Are you comfortable? Quite comfortable. Can I get you anything, darling? What did you say? I said, can I get you anything? No, thank you. Why do you keep staring out the window? Just looking. You see, from the beginning, I knew you wanted me to live until I was 30. 30? Yes. After that, well... You just didn't care, did you? No, I didn't care. But I wanted to be sure, so I pretended I was ill. Quite well, too, I thought. Pretended? Yes. You see, I wanted to study you, Melissa. I wanted to get to be not only 30, but a good deal older. Are you listening, Melissa? Yes. Yes, I'm listening. Oh, really, my dear, your mind seems to wander. You must relax. No. No, I'm listening. But this business of sleeping pills and trying to kidnap me, it was all very sloppy. Wasn't it, though? I could have left the train at any time. Of course. But I wanted to see just how far you really would go. It was clever of me, wasn't it? Very clever. Even going so far as to tell people I was insane. I did do that. That wasn't very nice, though, Melissa. After all, I am your husband. My husband. But you forgot one thing. Yes? My pre-med course. You know, I wanted to be a doctor once. You did, didn't you? Yes. 
Although I never did make it, I knew enough about people and symptoms to guess the verdict in your case. Uh, 30 days, the doctor said, wasn't it? 30 days. Yes. And so we're going back. Back to your mother and father and my mother and father. Oh, I, um, uh, I wouldn't tell them about this, uh, 30-day business if I were you. No use in exciting them. 30 days. That's not very long, is it, dear? Not very long. Thirty days. But then he could have made a mistake, an aneurysm. That heart might burst at any time. Thirty days. Mistake. What's wrong, Melissa? Wait, you mustn't get up, dear. The, the doctor said that... Thirty days. Melissa! Where are you going? Thirty days. Melissa, come back here. Thirty days. Melissa, don't go out there. Thirty. 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 Don't open that door. We're on a trestle. Thirty. Thirty. Don't jump, Melissa. Don't jump. Thirty. 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 Oh, uh, some woman. She jumped. <laughs> Poor thing. I guess she just didn't want to live any longer. Suspense. Presented by Roma Wine. R-O-M-A Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world Before we hear again from June Dupre, star of Your Devoted Wife Tonight's suspense play This is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines Everyone agrees that for a wedding No other wine will do but champagne And Roma California Champagne As discriminating wine users know makes it possible for everyone to enjoy the taste luxury of truly fine champagne at reasonable cost. So, if there's a wedding or anniversary on your June calendar, make it a sparkling golden moment with a pale gold bubbling brilliance of Roma California Champagne. Yes, Roma Champagne or Roma California Sparkling Burgundy add elegance and graciousness to any occasion, be it wedding, anniversary, birthday or other happy event. And because Roma is America's greatest vintner, with years of winemaking skill and resources unmatched in America, Roma brings you fine champagne at reasonable cost. So insist on Roma, R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. This is June Dupre. It's always an exciting experience to make an appearance on Suspense, a longtime favorite of mine. Next Thursday, you'll hear a remarkably talented new young actor, recently out of Uncle Sam's Navy and newly arrived in Hollywood, to begin what I'm sure will be a brilliant film career. That'll be Elliot Reed, who will appear as a star in a suspense play which all takes place on a bus, a bus making a return trip from a state insane asylum. I know you won't want to miss it. Thank you. June Dupre will soon be seen in the Paramount production, Calcutta. Next Thursday, same time, Roma Wines will bring you Mr. Elliot Reed as star of Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Produced by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>